It's Sunday. It's the 18th of December 2022. And it's the World Cup final day. And as ever, I'm a bit late with my timing. So the time is currently 22 to UK time. And kickoff here as kickoff here is at 3 p.m. And I've got to do a couple of podcasts quickly. I've been writing something up as well. So I'm going to do this podcast, which this one is the World Cup final preview. And then I've got another one I'm going to do straight after this one, a Lionel Messi special. And I'm going to upload both of them before the World Cup final starts. And then <laughs> we might get one later on today, depending on how the World Cup final goes. So, all right. Um, like I said, we're a bit rushed for time at the moment, but let's crack on. So I've just seen the Argentina team and Di Maria starts. So on the team sheet, it's Di Maria and Alvarez up front, Messi behind. And I think it's De Paul, McAllister and Fernandez in midfield. Molina and Acuna, fullbacks and Romero and Otamendi in defence. So I was... Thinking about this, what Argentina was going to do, whether they're going to go for a 4 4 2 or a 3 5 2. I don't think that Di Maria is going to play up front. The thing I was thinking about with the 4 4 2 against France is that that 4 4 2 from Argentina is pretty flat, and that space between the defense and the midfield you can call it between the lines for me, that was they were leaving that very open and for a team like France with Griezmann who I was going to say plays in the pockets but this World Cup he's been pretty much playing everywhere really so a player of his quality and his um, with his football intelligence I think would have found those spaces very very easily and caused Argentina all sorts of problems so I'm not sure how it's going to exactly look because I think Di Maria is not going to play up there he'll be helping the midfield as well so that for me is a very big area where Argentina have to watch um, I know Mbappe is obviously the danger man that everybody looks to but Griezmann in that central role as well Argentina are going to have to keep him under wraps and with Di Maria as well I think the counter attack and something that I say a lot is that in terms of dribblers and attracting people to the ball, Messi is the only one that does that for Argentina normally. But with Di Maria, you've got another player who is a dribbler. So he can attract people to him. And at the same time, that will create space for Messi. So they have to get the ball, transition that ball quickly to Messi. Because uh, Di Maria is another dribbler. He can push, he can he can penetrate. And on the counter attack, so he's got that pace um, to be a runner, to be another passing option for when Messi gets the ball, to almost get beyond Messi and push France back. So we don't know exactly how fit he is. Um, against Croatia, I think he could have come on, but obviously because Argentina was so comfortable, they probably thought there's no point. And he's had a week's rest off think so he came on against Holland didn't he and so hopefully he's fit maybe get 60 minutes out of him 60 70 minutes out of him and he could play a pivotal role he missed the uh, 2014 World Cup with injury wasn't it uh, and he could have played a big part in that as well so that was a shame so Di Maria has a lot of assets there are times when he um, starts giving the ball away a lot and he has one of um, kind of one of them players he either is good or bad there's not real in between Di Maria he scored the winning goal in the Copa America final against Brazil so hopefully he can come out with another big moment and like I said um, on, the, on the break he'll be dangerous and it'll be another player that can penetrate and attract players so hopefully that will create more space for Messi Mbappe, so Mbappe, I'm not sure, last night they were saying that Mbappe might play in the centre and they might drop Olivier Giroud and put Turam on the left. 
because that worked well for them because in the last match, uh, commentators were saying as well that Mbappe's not tracking back on the left-hand side. And when Tudor came on, he did a lot of that and um, Mbappe went down the middle. I'm not sure if Mbappe actually did that his favourite position down the middle. I think he prefers playing off the left and with somebody like Giroud who... Um, Giroud can uh, keep the centre-backs occupied almost and that leaves that space for Mbappe to roam and move into as well so it'll be interesting to see um, what happens there I think I, I think it'll be difficult to drop to drop Giroud to be honest the World Cup that he's having as well and I'm even a little bit surprised that f well say I'm surprised but Argentina have been changing their team quite a bit as well so but I would be very surprised if uh, Giroud did get dropped for this match. Uh, he's had a good World Cup. And he's a good foil as well, I think, for Giroud. It's just that France will have to watch that left side. So I think that Argentina and France, France have got a very strong team in terms of tactically and physicality as well. In terms of the players in one-on-one -on -one situations, they can handle themselves. Um... They are the defenders, the French defenders are very like front footed defenders, very aggressive. So, you know, if there's like a 50 50 or slight 45 55 stuff like that, I'm hoping Messi can, you know, just nick the ball or or be in a situation where he can force mistakes from those defenders. But they are very strong as a unit, and both teams would probably prefer counter attacking to be honest. I don't want to see, obviously I'm rooting for Messi and Argentina, but if Argentina do have lots of spells of possession, I think France will enjoy that, just waiting for them to make a mistake and pick them off with Mbappe especially. And I don't think Argentina want that to happen a lot in this match. Don't want Mbappe to get frequent into space and running at you and causing danger, committing players, getting fouled. So I think Argentina will kind of give it to France but France might want to do the same thing so it's going to be interesting to see what kind of uh, possession stats they are to be honest um, France set pieces as well I think they could be they've got some big players France could be dangerous as well so if you're Argentina you want to invo avoid giving corners in the first place as well Mbappe we've talked about Mbappe so Argentina energy, you're looking at the fans and I'm just looking at the team actually and I'm not sure if Tagliafico has come in for Acuna so I think that actually Ta Tagliafico is playing so I'm just got the TV and I think if they're saying the teams then Giroud, Mbappe, Griezmann, Dembele, Rabiot and Shuameni Hernandez left back, Upa Meccano, Varane and Kunde in defence. So I'm not sure, because I've got the, obviously I've got the TV on mute, so I'm not sure, because I'm sure they said that Acuna was playing, but it looks like Tagliafico is starting. So I'm not sure quite what's happened there. When I get off this podcast, I will have a little look. So yeah, I was saying the French defenders are very strong in the areas. Uh, so Argentina would uh, it would help if they avoided giving away a lot of corners or getting in situations full backs one on one situations and I was just saying yeah the fans advantage so the stadium is going to be jam packed with uh, Argentina fans possibly uh, maybe I could be wrong but even maybe 90% of the stadium will be Argentina fans um, even if they're not like from Argentina maybe neutral so hopefully that support can push Argentina over the edge and I think the energy Argentina are very, um, like they say, uh, kind of an emotional team. So they're like, good or bad, they ride on that wave of, of emotion. And hopefully they, they can kind of control it. You don't want to go over the top. You know, it's a World Cup final, aggressiveness, stuff like that. Emotion is good, but it's how you handle it as well. You don't want to give a goal away to France early, especially. And then you're having to, play a bit more expansive and then France are just hitting you on counters you know I think Argentina need to score first um, and second and third hopefully as well 
So if Argentina, you know, they score first, they get that energy from the fans and then it gives the players and Messi that extra bit of boost as well. So what else? Yeah, like I said, Messi is going to have to do something special one last time, I think. Maybe two bits of magic from him. For him, it's his last World Cup match. He was saying he has to play like almost it's his last ever match. Leave absolutely everything on the on the pitch leave your soul on that pitch it's you know it's history destiny of football and like i said uh for me france are going for two world cups as well so that's a bit of pressure for them so we'll see how they handle that pressure and like i said it's just the weight of expectation on messi as well Hopefully they can control it, Argentina, and they don't do anything silly to make it too open too early, and then I don't want it to go on penalties either or extra time, because France, like I said, they are very physically strong, but tactically they're good as well. And then Mbappe, has always got that threat, you know, for 120 minutes, 90 minutes, 120, he's always got that threat. So hopefully the fans, like I said, can push Argentina. And Messi to the to the World Cup, and like I said, I'm probably gonna mention it in the next podcast. What I'm just gonna do after this one about Messi as well, in terms of if they win the World Cup, it's almost too good to be true. Like football will be over. How many questions will be left of who's the great or go or 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 which player can get to this level? Messi would have almost completed football for me anyway. There's been nothing left for him to do, and any players that come after him, even Mbappe, like I know Mbappe has won the World Cup already, but he hasn't had a 15 year career, he hasn't even won the Ballon d'Or, he hasn't even won the Champions League, so there's still a lot for him to do as well. And that's just the stats, that's without getting to our uh, Messi's actual football that he's given us, and you know, so like I said. There's about an hour and five minutes left till kickoff. I'm gonna get off this podcast. I don't know if I'm gonna. I don't, I'm not gonna give a prediction. You know, I don't wanna curse anything or you know anything like that. But I just pray that Argentina somehow can win this match and give Messi that World Cup. So I'm praying. And hopefully it's going to be a good afternoon, a good evening and a good rest of my life. So yeah, thank you very much for listening. Hope you enjoy the World Cup, especially if you're rooting for Messi and Argentina. I'm going to do another podcast after this. And like I said, another one might be coming tonight. So you might get three on this Sunday. Lucky you, aren't you? And then if not, then I will probably do a World Cup post-match podcast tomorrow on monday so yeah thanks a lot one hour and five minutes to kick off take care and enjoy